It's how to train your dragon, but replace dragons with balls. No, literally, there are balls in this movie. We saw Rono the Barbarian. So you know what that means. at BAM to talk about the first animated movie ever on How Did This Get Made. <laughs> Ronald the Barbarian is about a weakling barbarian descendant from a long line of the strongest barbarians who goes on a quest to beat a bad guy. I don't know. This movie is R. It's weird. It's really just a simple kids movie but with a lot of shits and fucks and, like I mentioned, balls. It's like what a 12-year-old might do in his bedroom to, like, fan-dub a movie. Like, hmm, fuck you, you asshole. Eat shit, cocksucker. It, it feels like the curses are just snuck in there <laughs> willy-nilly. And I loved it. And to break down this movie tonight... I have two of the best. Two of the best animation experts, two of the best barbarian experts. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerks? How we doing, Brooklyn? That's right, bam. Why did you make me watch this movie? It was a beautiful day in New York. I sat in a hotel room and I watched this piece of shit for you. Jason. Paul. I felt like this movie was going to be right up your alley. Why? What? I take offense to that. I feel like that's the meanest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> I just, thought, I just see you watch it and be like, oh, Jason's going to love this. I think people thought you might have picked it. I don't pick anything. I'm, I'm subjected to these just as much as you are. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I did not like this. I didn't like... I, you know, is it really the first animated movie? You yes, that? the first animated movie. We've I was ever like, done. okay, cool, animation movie, great. I love animation movies. Boom, put it on. And within, I'm gonna say one minute. My one of my very first notes is, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it does jump out at you, but I'll tell you, I know you watch this in your hotel room. Our next co-host, well, we watch it together while eating brunch. In a restaurant. In a restaurant. On separate iPads. Oh, those, those, that wait staff has a lot to say to each other. And we both were laughing pretty loud. And I got to tell you, I think she might have enjoyed it more than all of us. Please welcome my other co-host, June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Okay. I, I'm going to say it right here. I'm going to say it loud, and I'm going to say it clearly. I enjoyed this film. No! I enjoyed Holy it. Holy shit. Here's, 
this is I enjoyed this, it. We are, I think I is it possible we have freaky friday this tour? I like last night's horny romance movie and thought for sure you I would. I hated it. And Paul thought for sure that I would like the animation and you loved it. And I was with you Paul. I was like as wow. I was walking here I was like Jason's going to be so happy. <laughs> Jason's going to love what this. Do you, who do you think I am? I'm going to talk in therapy about this. Listen, right. it flew by. Well, it's an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank God. That's the best news you're I You're telling me, you're telling me you didn't have some real laughs during this movie? Uh, no. <laughs> I will. Paul yeah, did. No, I'm sure Paul I did. did. I'm sure I, I did. did. I'm sure I did, but I, not, I was really like shocked at how absolute dog shit this was. Honestly, Jason, loosen up. That being said, you're right. I was out. Ho- I was in the hotel in bed suffering from jerk off elbow. So, <laughs> um, the tagline for this movie uh, is "Babes, balls, and muscles in 3D for the whole family." Oh wait. wait, there's a 3D version. Were you guys of this? watching no, 3D it with 3D animation? Were you guys watching with 3D glasses at brunch? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, what is 3D animation? I think 3D animation is this style of animation. Oh, like like oh. 2D animation is more like uh, Beauty and the Beast, and then 3D animation is like Toy Story. Like that, a little bit more Got three-dimensional. It. Now, here's what I'll say. This movie came out in 2011, and if you go to find it on your Amazon or, or anything like that, a, a streaming service, it is put next to... Children's films. I, my, one That's of my upsetting. main questions was, who is this for? Because it presents like it's a How to Train Your Dragon, yes. yeah. a Crudes, a something like that. And boy, oh boy, is it not. It is, from the jump, close-ups of balls and crotches and titties. And the I was first like, joke is, I mean, the opening is kind of very traditional, right? You're seeing this this opening of like this big battle cool characters and then someone cool done. characters <laughs> i thought they were kind of cool looking right yeah you're a big cron head you love uh, cron you won't stop talking about cron i mean come on when cron's fighting i'm like cool so the, <laughs> when the, the cron fr- bleeds for seven days and seven nights and everybody drinks his blood so cool kids but, Everybody, kids, right? This is for you, right? But here's what I would say. That open, you have a little kid drinking it, he's like, whoosh, gets muscles. And then that little weak, uh, like, barbarian drinks just a drop, and either his dick or balls grow big. I don't know which one. That's but- when I wrote, that is literally when I wrote, what the fuck is this movie? Right, because up until that point. I rewound. I rewound to be like, is that what happened? Well, I think the, one of the reasons why I... I enjoyed it. And I'm not too proud to say that. I enjoyed it. Maybe the movie is for me. Maybe I'm the intended target. But I, We have finally broken I think June. this movie is it's for me. It's taken 13 years. But I years. also, Paul, you had... There was a lot of setup going into this movie. There's a lot of talk about... It's an animated movie, June. Like, get ready. And I was you like... You had to be prepped. I did. I, I was like, Paul, I got to work out this morning because I'm going to have to let some energy out before I sit down and watch this. I mean, I was prepped for such a nightmare. And again, because we had done Jonathan Livingston Siegel here in New York. You're welcome. You're they welcome. loved it. You that loved I was it. like, loved I it. guess we're giving another gift to the city we love. Yeah. And I'm going to have to suffer through this. So I, and you had also said it's a sex comedy. You said those words a number of times. Well, I do think <laughs> a number of times. <laughs> he kept on saying, we're going to watch an animated sex comedy. I said it once. <laughs> once, and maybe I was like, twice. Oh, said, okay. I don't know what that could mean. I, I don't know what this well, is going to be. So then when it went down so smoothly. This movie. So smoothly. This movie should be in the restricted section <laughs> with the pornos at the, at the rental store, if that Here's existed. what I want to say about the comedy and why... I believe this movie's <laughs> sense of humor is what elevated. Is happening? Wow. There's the comedy, what? and this is what you might have missed, Jason, if you weren't watching closely. <laughs> this is there's the my comedy, favorite episode of the show so there's far. The comedy, Go ahead. There's the you comedy. You're tearing in, Team Fred apart. Sorry. 
there's the comedy in the foreground, the scenes. And there's some built-in comedic beats to those scenes, some funny lines. But what you may have missed, and I suspect you did, is the background comedy in this movie. The, the BGC? Yeah, the background pieces, the, uh, the ADR, the things that are on the, the throwaways on the side, the stuff they added in months after the animation had ended, <laughs> that's where the real jokes were. Well, I And will, that's I will, where it was like genuinely very funny. Well, what I found about this wow. movie is it's kind of like all wow. the perverted <laughs> jokes that you hear. It's like, oh, did you see like in The Little Mermaid, the castle actually looks like a dick, you know, or like in the sun, it, there's like an image of tits and also, Lion King. please stop sending me those. <laughs> But did you I'm see aware it? of you them get now. it. You, you don't get need it. to keep sending All right, me those just, images. But sometimes Joe they're high Campbell's red. Joe Camel's nose has a dick in it. Joe Camel is still a thing. Oh and I'm going to say Jason. No Joe Camel. No, ca- no Joe Camel heads. <laughs> Jason saw this right before the show started. I said, I want to go back and watch the opening scene again. When I tell you, never in my life. Have I witnessed June re-watch part of a movie willingly hey, in the said. green room interrupting a delightful conversation we were having about New York City? She was like, yeah, excuse like, me, I just need to re-watch the beginning. I saw that before I went out here and it unnerved me. And I'll say this. Um, and she I'm, was there like... <laughs> and not only that, sorry, Paul, but Jason said, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You haven't finished it? And I go, oh, no, I, I'm just... I just want to watch the first scene again. Oh, yeah. Because it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon for us to need to finish the movie when we're in the green room or something, yeah. the last 10 minutes or something. But for you to have finished it and want, want to bring see it all again. your gear, you, that means you brought your iPad to the... Wow. I did. Forget it. <laughs> I did. And not only that, but what I just wanted to say is on second viewing of that opening, Are, the first 10 minutes... Is this a second minutes, opinion? <laughs> The second viewing of the first 10 minutes of the film, I, I had noticed one of, our, um, one of our villains had like red marks on his ass. And I didn't know why. And then when I rewatched it just about 20 minutes ago, I saw that to get the horse going, he had been saying, hey and whipping his own ass. And if you forgot and that you scene... You missed that the I missed first that. Time? I missed that in the first viewing. I By the way, in my notes... I did, I did too, and I'm going to say that's even longer than the first 10 minutes if you watch that deep in, because check out scene four, just so if everyone can get on the same page as June, here we go. All sons of Kron are gathered. Lord Farkazai. Then the time is come. Crotch. <laughs> Pretty cool characters. Now, I will say what I noticed in watching that again is that that character is kind of an s and character. I didn't oh, get that. It? Oh, is it? Oh, oh, I didn't get it. I didn't oh, notice. Oh, no, I love the movie. <laughs> until you seeing it on the big screen, this I didn't a, notice so that it's... This is a movie that needs to be watched on the big screen. This is, yeah, we should... I advocate we stop doing the podcast and just watch the movie here. And I am shocked that no one's here dressed as characters from this movie. <laughs> this movie is like, what if a kid's movie, but the villains are Lord of the Rings-style leather daddies? And, and that's what we're doing! I would Later, also... it's ball gags. And it, I was like, what? <laughs> Even the book... The, 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 where the book is on the roof of the elvish thing is somebody like... I loved it. The lectern? The lectern? Loved that part. The lectern, loved I thought that was clever. Now what I'll clever. say... I did too, Paul. I did too. What Show I will your say, sons this movie. <laughs> well, that's what I'm afraid of. But I, I, will, I will argue this, that you know maybe June is onto something because according to the Nordic Film and TV website, this film, uh, opened very high, and not only did it open high, it is in the top five Hang of on. the most. Yes, where the Nordic Film and TV website? Where is that? Uh, in the Nordic area. Yeah. The, <laughs> you know, well, we the often top film where in with use eleven plus in Denmark. Denmark. 
This is a Danish movie, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Admit it. Yes. It's it a is. goddamn Danish movie. I said when we started this podcast, I, I said I would never do it. I told you. You I just got Dane. Do <laughs> if Dane DeHaan is here, I'm going to be furious. Danes love this movie. And it was a movie that was already supposed to be for English and Danish audiences. Uh, and, and what I found weird, though, was, yes, we're in this Conan the Barbarian world, but the English dub, and I watched both. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> they really lean into the New Yorker version of this world. Like, hey, yeah, what do you want over there? Like, I was like, huh? I thought you meant the magazine, the New Yorker. <laughs> Which I also would have loved. They have a monocle. <laughs> but there was like this energy where it was like their stereotypical American voices. There wasn't like a, an energy to be like, we are all these kind of characters. It was like, no, no, we're just going to do like, hey, you piece of shit. You know, well, it's like. I, and I will now say I did Google it, looked it up and saw that all of the cast were Danish actors, including my boy, Grand Admiral Thrawn himself, Lars Mikkelsen. Yes. Is a voice, I guess, in the... He's not in the version we saw, though, is he? No, the no, one that okay. we saw did have Brigitte Nielsen. She's the head of the Amazon uh, queen. She was amazing. Oh, wow. and the Amazon, I will say, the wonderful. Amazon section was phenomenal. Fantastic. I have no problem with that section. If they want to spin that off, I'm I in. no. Here's the thing. Honestly, like this is what Amazon's I'll, jumping rope. Amazon's like, <laughs> I I will get into it because I'm I'm like, if we're gonna go there, let's fucking go there. Like this movie feels like it is like we're an adult movie, but they don't show. That's what I'm saying. The movie is thinks it's so close to being heavy metal, the yes, movie. Yes, And it is not heavy metal, the movie. It is, it feels more to me like How to Train Your Dragon, unfortunately. With balls. And, and, and so much balls. Balls I, have their own set piece. And it works. By the way. It works. That set piece, <laughs> that set this piece. This is the most insane June take in history. You're telling me that that scene of those balls going up the Jumping staircase. Jumping around, it was, it was funny. It's, that's funny. That's what I call comedy. Tiny arrows. I, Perfect. I love those balls. I had what? trouble. I love I those that, balls too. Pull that quote. Pull that Keep quote. It put it in, in a song. Keep it in. But though I couldn't figure out the physics of where the body was. I was following the balls, but I was like, "How would? where would the body be to get the I balls? I would rather, frankly, the body hit the floor. <laughs> but that sequence of, of the balls being out, like little bouncy things on a karaoke, uh, you know, singing. Follow, the, follow the bouncing balls? Yes. I, I thought it was such a crazy sequence. Uh, but it made me uncomfortable, especially when the cod piece stared and we saw some fleshy balls. Well, okay, so like, that no, was no, my no. question. That was my question: is why was he still? Why was his? Why were his balls still covered by a leather satchel? So he, he I didn't... think because mustn't he what have happened? to get naked to rub the invisibility? Stuff? No, oh. you don't. You just have to throw. You just have to rub it on oh, yourself, okay. I think, and then things get invisible. Got so it. okay. This yeah, that's where it to, ran that's out. What, I thought he walked around the stone so that he could take all of his, him not walking, all of his clothes. Him but his, walking yeah. behind the stone appeared for no reason because yeah. it seemed like they just needed to get him off screen so we wouldn't see him not rubbing his balls. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I feel like what you were after, Paul, was you wanted to see more like animated full sex scenes. <laughs> And I think what must have happened, and maybe I'm, that's a both of you on it, but cool. I think what yeah, must sure. have what must have happened was Is, they must have, for that rating, had some sort of like negotiation of like, well, we can show balls, we can show real balls at one point in flesh, but we can't have these others, like we can't have the scene actually with the Amazon women. My question would be, because this has got to be rated R, the, it just is. for language alone. So yeah. why couldn't you have... Like nudity. I'm not saying like show penetrative sex, although please show penetrative sex. Well, We're in a world in which everybody's like, I don't want sex in my movies, no more sex scenes. And I'm like, show penetrative sex in animated movies now. 
It's but such think, a tough platform to run on, listen, and yet you're... I am. I need your votes. <laughs> His name I'm, is Woody for And you're running for Speaker of the House. I'm running for Speaker of the House. Wow. That's right. My only platform. We need... Congress needs to get back to work, and we need full penetration in our animated movies. Full funding of full penetration <laughs> animated Pixar movies. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Bring it happen. <laughs> oh, boy. There is, but to me, I felt like, I don't need to see sex, but maybe some boobs, too. Maybe some okay. dicks. Why aren't I we agree. seeing? Why aren't we? Why aren't we seeing boobs? You don't have to even make them sexual, but like it's just like I it's feel like I saw a lot of boobs. I didn't personally. see any, covered. and I wanted to. <laughs> covered. They were barely covered. Covered. Barely. They were barely covered, but covered still. Gross. When they go to that Amazon tribe, and he was used as a mating device. Show us that, you cowards. <laughs> <laughs> well, Show us that, you Danish cowards. <laughs> I did feel bad for him because he's clutching at his dick and balls for that you know, whole scene. You know, what could have happened? Yeah, like they really... The best night of his life! <laughs> but that... See, Did here's, think here's the was thing. a virgin? Well, okay, so I... Ha- this was the only problem I had with the movie, and I mean only, is I never knew if Ron- Ronal... Ronal. Ronal was like... Ronal was... Scronal. Was like 14 or 42. I was okay. like... At first, when we first saw him, I thought, this is, a, this is a, twel- I, a 12-year-old or a 16-year-old. And then as the movie progressed, and we got some close-up shots of him. And I did think the way that this movie deals with body hair and animates it, I okay. found it to be so almost too realistic. You know? Well, in I, the scene that we just saw... In, with the ass uh, whipping on the horse, he has a hairy butt crack. That's what I'm saying. Somebody there's, in there's... Denmark animated a hairy butt crack <laughs> cell by cell. This is what I'm whatever. saying. They, they took much. all the freaks that put all that crazy shit in Disney movies. Like, come over here and let your freak <laughs> flag fly. Like, there were a team of animators for months working on little balls, a ball sack. Just running what, around. What are you to, working on? Oh, I'm working on the, the ball set. <laughs> to the Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> oh by the God. way, Incredible. talk about layers of jokes. There it is right yeah, there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, you have to be awake for this movie. You have to be awake and watching. You miss it. It'll fly by you. I, I did like, they're, uh, talking about some of the background stuff, I did write this down. I did laugh at, like, when they saw a scene of, like, warriors being attacked there was an arm coming out of somebody's asshole. Uh, what? A, well, no, a sword put in somebody's ass and then an arm like shoved into someone's mouth. So that's the background you got to watch. Uh, and that's some solid jokes. That, again, it's in, the, it's in the background. Let go of the foreground, you know, as a concept and really train your eyes to see the background. Maybe we need to rewatch this in a future episode, but just the backgrounds. <laughs> I mean, but but anyway, but the, but what I was gonna say about body hair is that is that Ronal Ronal in the close-up shots, like he does have a, a a lot of facial hair. Well, in fact, in the Amazons, they pluck one out of his face and are like, "This woman has hair on her face." That was a funny sequence that they again. I, I laughed out of ten for the Amazons. when Ronal said, "I don't know if it was Ronal or." Al- Alberta, when one of them said, Wait, you, know, you know the other names? Uh, the bard. I don't know what his name was. His the name, other guy, yeah. Alberta. Wait, is it Alberto? It's Alibert. Alibert. Right? Oh, oh. When Alibert says, Can I just say Wait. for a brief moment, it is absolutely categorically insane that you remember side <laughs> character names from one of our movies. <laughs> <laughs> stayed with me. This is he next stayed le- with I love, me. I love every minute of this. But when he said, "Wait, we're women," I laughed <laughs> so hard. I, I, I mean, that fully like soup to nuts. That's a great sequence. The Amazon sequence, a nuts. great sequence. Soup to nuts. <laughs> soup to nuts. Well, let let's let's see. Um, Let's actually see that Amazon yes. scene. Great. Scene nine. Are those real? Of course. I just had to see you. Ooh. 
is the first time I laid eyes on you. I wanted to rub my naked body all over your manly chest. Ah! Forget the silly rules. I just gotta have you now, <laughs> sexy boy. Uh, just a second. I'm about to lose control. Uh, take me. Oh, take me hard. Oh, oh, oh. Mama's home. Oh, Let me oh, eat you, baby. Oh, you bring out a woman in me. Take oh, me hard. <laughs> oh, oh, I find you very sexy, Miss Queen, but my friend needs me, and I have to go. What? Listen, just have your girls capture me again on my way back. I didn't... I wanted Allie Burt to get love at the end. I agree! I and agree. I felt I'm like glad, they had a connection there. But I'm she glad turned. he chose to, say, to go and help his friend, but yeah, I mean, like, he can get at least something going. But this is the thing I wasn't about worried about him. I wasn't focused on him. Here's my issue with that, this movie. You're all Ronal all the time. All the time, all day long. But there's a, there's a thing, and I guess, by the way, Brigitte Nielsen only did the Danish version, because that's definitely not it does. Voice. It does look like her, though. It, it does like look like her. They definitely animated it to her. Yes, and it's odd they didn't just take her to do it. They have a southern woman being the head of the Amazons. Bizarre I'm sorry, though. When she takes one boob and slaps him across the face with it, what more? That, we work, we that, work so hard. Mm. We have such difficult lives. Like, that made me laugh. Is yeah. that so wrong? No. And I'm sure so for... So wrong! I'm sure for some people, for some people, that is how a fetish is born. <laughs> I want that to happen to me. There is something, though, about this movie where I feel like, again, I just want to go back to this idea that I just wanted them to push it a little bit more because at the end of the movie, it just becomes a straight up Lord of the Rings. Like the end of the movie is just like, oh, we're just watching a battle. Nothing. It's just like, we shut don't up, care. you fucking dick. Like that's all you yeah. like. Those are just shot in to be like, no, no, it's still adult. Don't worry about it. Like, but I feel like that's the thing that bummed me out that the bookends were just a basic movie with weird ADR in the background. And I really just wanted. You know, maybe defeat him with your dick. Defeat him with yeah. your balls. Like, let's do that. Do right. you think these, do you think the, they thought they were making a sausage party-esque, raunchy, blah, blah, blah? Or were they making a, you know, slightly more risque movie for young people? Well, I will tell you that this is what the director said. After decades of Pixar, now Rango and Wreck-It Ralph, which are solid movies. Love Rango. Rango's great. Which are solid movies. Audiences have matured. Yes, we have. And people are catching up and trying to make films that match American movies in terms of story and character. So that was his idea. It was like, hey, if you saw Wreck-It Ralph, now you want to see Wreck-It Ralph's balls. <laughs> like, let's grow with the audience. Like Taylor Swift, let's start them young and then pull them into I'd their 30s and 40s. See Fix it, Felix's balls. I'd rather Mac Jack McBrayer be like, y'all, this is crazy. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Fix by it. The, by the way, in 2016, a Chinese company did buy the rights to this film because they are going to make a live action remake. Oh, fantastic. What, that will be, can we just announce that will be the final episode of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it comes around to it, probably not for a while, that will be the final episode. Oh my God. You're going to tell me though, Jason, in the world of like all of the movies we've had to watch, that oh, yes. you didn't enjoy this? Oh, it was fine. It was fine. It was just, it, <sighs> I'm, I'm, I guess I'm butting up against a little bit of, it, my sausage party question is kind of what I wanted. I think I would have enjoyed it more if it was just, a complete embracing of the insane yeah. gonzo nature of it. Sure. That movie I could have gotten on board for. The version of it that is an actual, like, that I'm meant to care about the Samwise character coming to the rescue and the fellowship coming back together and defeating the bat. Like, all of the plotting, I was like, no, 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 no. Just give me nonsense set pieces right. and I'll enjoy this more. But I think the movie wanted us to care about the dumb uh, quest. The quest. Which in the back, when you were playing the um, trailer and we were listening in the back, June said, why couldn't he just go on a quest? I Which did ask that. Which is a valid question. Yeah. I did ask, like, why was he so against going quest? Why is he so quest-averse? Quest 
It yeah. was, it, they never really underlined a couple of things that we needed. Like, he didn't want to be a part of it. I but also, what, and I guess that's my question for the barbarians. You know, what... <laughs> what the barbarians kind of, that are here tonight? All of them. Well, they're all up there. They're all on that. Oh, yeah. No, they're, the, they're the barbarians. They're all there. Barbarians yeah. are up there. This, the, the <laughs> mezzanine, these are very respectful people. <laughs> but why... Wh- I wanted to know what kind of quests had they been on before? What happened? Well, the you barbarians know, are super strong. They defeat everybody who comes to them. But we never see that. And the minute they are challenged, they are so easily crushed. Like, yeah. it is really like, you know what? I think they deserve to go extinct. You know? Well, they're, they're literally defeated by, like, Lord Zerg. Uh, it does look like they were like, somebody saw Toy Story. He's like, that's our villain. Like, it's like, this is the Lord Zerg. But I will talk about the Shield Maiden, because that's our love interest. And that's our heart of the story. Shield Maiden was interesting to me because she was a fighter, but it seems like if you're a Shield Maiden, you wouldn't have a sword. If you're You'd a, have a Shield, shield Maiden. Yeah. Now that's interesting. That's a, like I wouldn't go through all point. the no the happens as yep. a Shield Maiden, Shield Maiden, and then be like, but shield she fights maiden. and looks exactly like anybody else in this movie that we've seen. She is dressed right. just like a barbarian. Yes. Um, she's looking for the barbarians. Yes. And in the very brief flashback, because I was like, oh, maybe we'll meet more shield maidens. Or, and everybody seems to know Im- immediately upon seeing her, oh, you're a shield maiden. Nothing. To Not, I her. don't ever understand anything about it. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, it, doesn't that just connote that she would be carrying the shield? Simple as that. Just give me a shield for a character who is called shield maiden. Like, it does seem like... Listen... You need, yeah. It's a movie, you know, not everything's gonna. <laughs> this, like, I'm gonna remind you of this. <laughs> Just let it go. Just wow. a what, movie. Was la- I'm la- what was last night's movie called? Beautiful, Beautiful, Beautiful Day- Disaster. Disaster. Yeah. I would so much rather the nonsense and the jokes, the hilarious jokes in that movie than in this movie because I laughed so much wow. more. We are having, wow, June. I don't you know I, you. We need to talk. We have to go to couples therapy. I don't know you at we all. We have to go to team Fred therapy. We will show this in couples therapy. We should go on the Showtime show, couples therapy, and show clip five and then see who found it funny because I think that therapist on couples therapy would find it very funny. Here we go. You know what? Your tits look a bit heavy. Can I hold them for you? Your mom has to sag his tits around. Shut the fuck up, ugly. Oh. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, we, we were looking for a guide. <gasps> There's only one left. In the back, behind the shitter. Ask for Elric. Hey, who wanted a beer in a double Manhattan? Get your okay, thanks. Great character. Fun character. That fairy Love that woman. is stacked. <laughs> that fairy also... Is serving Manhattans. Yes, because at a one double point goes, Manhattan. Yeah, a, d- a double Manhattan. Well, she can never find its rightful owner, including though. when the, the place blows up. <laughs> she dies looking. trying to deliver a double I Manhattan. And the women of this movie, you know, <laughs> I do think that the movie has more of a feminist bent than maybe both of you are ready to see. Oh no, wow. I think I think you're right. I think it's there. I it's, mean, the most, the fiercest warrior in their, in their party is the female character. Absolutely. Y- yeah. And also, like, there are these side characters, her. And, and I, I would watch an entire movie about this bar wench. I would love to know yeah. how she ended up there. I'm with you. And also, like, we never, I wish. Paul, now we're back. June and I are back. We want a side <laughs> movie of the fairy waitress who has human-sized D tits. Just her. I'm listening. I'm listening. If I'm going to get any side character, it would probably be the Oracle who needs his Holy asshole shit. wiped. But Are you the nurse? The nurse to just wipe his ass? What? Who, who comes intermittently when he shits? But anyway, go ahead. Like, he what goes, are you, you the nurse? As if she shows up occasionally. Oh, I see. Like, it's like... Oh, like it's like almost like he has a medical alert brace. It's like, time to take a shit, dink. You know, and then the nurse comes in. And be careful of the hemorrhoids. What I found disgusting about this movie. Everything? Well, it goes there with that. Like, 
little arrows into balls. I'm like, ooh, you know, and I'm like, and then in that moment where he wipes the character's ass, the next scene he's like sniffing his own oh, finger. He's like, wiping oh. it. He's he's washed wiping his finger so much. I was like, what is this? This but is then he gags, he gags on smelling the shit finger, and I was like, ooh, that's more upsetting to me yeah. than anything I could possibly ever see. I feel like this movie is about leather daddies, shit play, cock and ball torture. Like, this entire now, movie is built off of Pornhub categories. Now, would you be surprised? Would you be surprised to know that in the new Saw movie, Saw 10, every one of the characters being held hostage is being forced to watch this. That's the only trap. I would not be surprised. Are That's, you leaving? Where I'm are you go going? Out, I'm going to go out and talk to the audience. Already? Already? <laughs> we just got started. I'm so sorry, Paul. Do you have somewhere to be? I will Paul's, sit back Paul's down. like, I'm trying to second, I'm trying to second <laughs> act Gutenberg tonight. Sit down. I am it's happy to Paul's just relax. Off. I've barely touched my notes. <laughs> These people, most of them probably, a lot of them probably got a sitter. Let's hear from whoever got a sitter. Yes. Parents Thank night you. out, getting sloppy at BAM, hand jobs outside. <laughs> I will say, for the record, this is the time I normally go out, but... <laughs> Uh, I will sit here because I have a lot more notes myself. Um, so I, much, there's so much titty twisting in the movie. Well, that I was like, and and it's wonderful because there's so, <laughs> it's wonderful, it's wonderful because <laughs> I will say it's not every day where you see a movie present like men's nipples. As Pierce. such a Pierce, Pierce nipples, you guys as are right. such I a not like, have gone into the crowd. This is great. <laughs> Continue. As such an area of like fixation, like we really oh, yeah, have to this. spend a lot of time. They're all everybody's got n- uh, full on nipple clamps that's and why, harnesses. And, and by the way, that's when 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 you guys said there aren't enough boobs in this movie, I was like, I feel like I've saw many. Oh, boobs. you're right. You're right. They were men's boobs, Correct. but there were boobs. All the men, all the bad are men's guys, boobs men's boobs. No, now we're see. Paul. Now I'm glad you're not in the audience. I agree, because it's our oh, men's boobs. Boobs. Yes, there's the T-shirt without a doubt. That seems like it borders on the dirty. But I think it's our men's boobs. Boobs? Question it's, mark. Paul Shear. It's very much so. Where does the butt start? Yeah, in that area. Can you call men's boobs boobs? Of course. Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. Audience? Is, I, I audience they, can't. They're breasts. Are men's they're boob breasts, boobs They're breast plates. Yeah. Or yeah. do we call men's boobs like a chest or something different? Pecs. Balcony is, is with me. Well, can we get house lights? What is the or somebody, some, some librarian, I'm going to guess. Is there a librarian here who can tell me the etymology of boobs? Where did we get boobs from? Don't force a librarian to. No, I only want a librarian. Is there a medical doctor in the? We have to have a medical doctor in the house. Oh, is there a boob doc in the house? No, cowards. Oh, back here, back there, back there. I see one. Okay, hold on, I'm going. What are you gonna ask? Are men's boobs? Boobs. All right, where, where, who do we have? Hi, how are you? Yeah, uh, OBGYN, family medicine. Okay. Um, Give it up! Well, what's her Thank name? Thank you for your service. Erin Carey. Give it up. Okay. And to true or false, you'll be doing pap smears in the, uh, in the uh, um, lobby afterwards? All night. Great. All, All night paps, baby. That's right. Best part. Um, so, yeah, men have breast tissue, and uh, those are moobs. Those are big... Man- That's a technical term? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, yes, so breast tissue on both. Yeah, we got to do, like... Like, if you have a mass in a male, you have to still do a massogram. Okay. Yes. And it's still breast Thank cancer, you. I assume? Yes, it is. Thank you. All right, we did it. Thank you. Great work. Fantastic. Great work. It, it always makes me worried when doctors listen to the podcast. <laughs> we need it. Well, I answered that question. I should have asked her about the butt, too. 
I like the idea of a doctor performing surgery and being like, well, you know, I'm just going to play something while, while I do this. As the other putting the propofol in, they're like, come back from 10, 10, 9. And it's like, boom, how did this get me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I did have a colonoscopy recently, and the anesthesia is so cool, I know. And the anesthesiologist literally seconds before putting the propofol in my body went, big fan, man. No. No. Big fan, man. Big fan. Big fan, man. And I was like, cool, bro. Get ready to see the inside of my asshole. That's wild, it is wild crazy. stuff. Wild stuff. Big fan. Big fan, man. I can't believe and- I have the chance to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Big fan, man. You're going to feel a little cold, and then you're going to have the best sleep of your life. Rafi. Oh, no. I didn't know you could be put out for colonoscopies. That's great news. Um, You can be. I I simultaneously had an endoscopy as well. Not simultaneously, but in the same. So that's... that's, You don't have to be put out for a colonoscopy. I'd prefer to be. And you guys didn't want me to go out into the crowd. (laughs) Um... See, we, we would have missed all of this <laughs> Never gold. Never gotten that. Cut out all of the stuff about my colonoscopy <laughs> from the podcast. That's just for you, Brooklyn. Oh, man. That's right. Brooklyn there, gets the butt stuff. There. Brooklyn loves butt stuff. There are some weird <laughs> turns of phrase in the film. It's like, mama's tits can't save you now. Could they ever? Yes, actually. I, and I felt like that was an interesting moment because, again, you guys, you might have missed a lot. You might have really missed a few things because when we cut into that bar scene, there's a whole discussion. Of, there's like a lot of mom jokes. And then that one villain guy who threatens to fight um, Zandra at the end, at the end the of that scene. Yeah, I know her name. Never before. Yeah, I know her name. Before. Never before. Zendra. Zendra. You, you, can you don't name remember three? people's names. You don't remember Zendra. my name sometimes. <laughs> but, wow. But that guy who, who comes out, you know, swinging at the end, wanting to fight her and conquer her. When we cut into that scene, he's having a conversation where he's, he's making some your mom jokes. And specifically like your mom's tits jokes. But then strangely, there's like a little pause and he goes, yeah, but I really do love my mom. Yes. And I was like... Yes, I heard that too. And I will say to your kind of background point, there there are a ton of funny side weird jokes that I only got because I had closed captioning on. Because they were a lot of times... Conversations that we I were passing by. I love the applause by. for closed captioning. Every time. Every time I mention turning on closed captioning, big pop from the audience. That is like, a, that's a middle-aged audience right there. Those by the way, <laughs> by the way last, <laughs> night, last night as we were driving. Not a Gen Z in the house. Everybody's like, no, colonoscopy. No, Yay! that's the thing. Close captioning, yay! That's Gen, my story too. Gen Z has brought in close captioning because of social media. It's a social. It's a young thing. Close captioning is a young. Wait thing. a minute. Are there Gen Z people here? Thank you. Get them out of here. Um, I will say this. Uh, just talking about mom and mom jokes. On the way home last night from New Haven to here, uh, our son called us and very seriously said, um, can I talk to you guys in private? And we said, yeah. And he goes, okay. Now, this is not true. And we're like, okay. And he's like, yeah, it's not true. And he pulled himself away from our nanny who was in the house, his little brother, and I was like, here we go. Whatever could this be? And he goes, um, okay, but this is not true. And we said, okay, all right. And he goes, your mom is so fat. That when she sweats, it's maple syrup. <laughs> and did, then... Did he deliver it just like that? Just like he that. Did, oh, my God. He really not, wanted to make sure we knew it wasn't true. He's like, no, that's not true. It's not true. 
Ugh. and then did like four more, but in that cadence. Yeah. It's like a, there was mama's... a sadness to it. Yeah. Just your I've mama's... got. I have to get these out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just sorry. have to. I've got to say all I of have them. To say all of them. Your mama's teeth are so yellow that when she smiles at traffic, cars slow down. <laughs> and I did say to him, I said, "Well, my mom's dead, so." <laughs> This is really hurtful, actually. And then, like, please <laughs> tell me, please tell me he had dead mama jokes, because that's where this is going. It was so. But now, how about this joke? I know that you like that mama joke, but what about the jokes like you're as boring as a yeast infection? That felt to me like, huh, boring. Not a woman, but I, boring doesn't seem like the way you would describe a yeast infection. Uh. This ye- I'm so bored of this. Ye- this yeast <laughs> infection is boring. You're hey, as annoying your, as How's a your yeast, yeast infection? infection? Boring. Honestly, I've never had one. I can't speak on it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they are boring. I've never had one. That was uh, my friend saw The Who at Madison Square Garden, and Roger Daltrey uh, was on stage in the audience. Like, yeah, and he goes, Viagra. <laughs> never needed it. Never will. And then, and then the audience went like this. <laughs> huge and then he, mistake and then he had to be like but it's okay <laughs> alright now I'm going to the All right. what? Okay. it's okay <laughs> alright so who has questions you want to have a question come here alright you come to me alright uh, your name James James alright give me your question about Ronald the Barbarian. Speaking of penetrative sex, was the implication in the scene in the tavern the man was going to fuck the goat on the second floor or the goat was going to fuck him? Great question. <laughs> and J- this is to the background <laughs> jokes that June, June is talking about. June is the scholar of this movie. <laughs> June studying this movie like the Torah. <laughs> I actually don't remember that scene. I, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm I, devastated I to admit it. I don't remember that scene. I remember it. mouth tied shut? I remember it, and it no. felt to me like the movie was going for the goat fucking him. Great. You know what? We need more goats <laughs> fucking dudes. I am in balcony one. Be careful, Paul. Where are you? Which side? Oh, there you are. All right, I have a question here from Balcony One. Balcony One, okay, yes, what's your name? Luna. Luna, what's your question? If you were in charge of making a happy meal for this movie, <laughs> what, what would you make the toy? What I would mean, you make the a, toy? There's Great There's got to be a question. couple of toys. There's got to be a couple of toys, because I feel like there's a couple of big I, items. Yeah, I definitely think that some sort of, like, strap-on balls. <laughs> yep. Would be important. I was literally going to say, like, Benoit balls would be a great thing. No, I think, like, a, I was going to say, like, a pouch for your balls. Like a, a ball pouch or, or just straight up nipple rings. That's because great. Everybody's That's got great. them. Yeah. If not a character in this movie doesn't have pierced nipples. It's, it's, it's everybody. I would say a cigarette. So you could act out your little fantasies like that bar a, wench. A loot, I guess. I think she was smoking a joint. Really? I thought a cigarette. cigarette. I thought a cigarette as well, but I, I, I wish it was a joint. They definitely smoke out of bongs. Like, oh, yeah. Like skull bongs. And they're like, good stuff, bro. It's like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> Did anybody watch it in Danish? Are there any Danes in the house? Remember, no? Jason okay. hates Fine. the Danes. Fine. <laughs> All right. Yes, you're. Who had a question? Yes, uh, Patrick Murphy. Thank you. Uh, when, yes, full doing, names, everybody. Are we doing please. first and please, last everyone. names? Hey guys, full name Honestly, and profession, like you're in the movie old. Confirmation names, and, and, all of it. And address, guys. <laughs> don't talk to yourself. Social security number. Last four digits of your social security number, and then go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> Mother's Patrick maiden name Alan and then begin. Murphy. When, hey, when I, I apologize for not remembering his name, when Ronal mounts his dying guardian, did you notice, I wondered if you noticed, that he did full face waterfall? Yes! I did. He did! It was uh, awesome! I wrote that down. Was it, was it full... awesome, Paul? It was awesome? <laughs> what? It was awesome? Well, we don't get to see face waterfalls <laughs> and everything. 
Oh, yes. No, we need more. We need to actually the three of us need to commit to putting face waterfalls in as many projects once we're back to work as possible. Listen, I, I don't know. This is a real Easter egg. But in Burning Love, I did face waterfall Michael Sarah, and, and nobody ever picked up on it. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Here's a guy in an outcast shirt from our Jonathan Livingston Siegel episode. Great work. All right. Your name, your question. Jason asked if there were any Danes in the house. My name is Dane. (laughs) Boom. You did it. All right. Hey, Dane. You Um, know that's not what I meant. (laughs) uh, So my question is, uh, especially for June, what age should this be shown to children? What, What age? When do we start? Yeah, when do we start showing this to we children? We don't. Hey, we don't. This is of, not a children's movie. Let me say that clearly. This out is of not curiosity, a Dane, do you have children? <laughs> okay. So, so don't worry so about it. So for you, never. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. For you, you shouldn't be never showing this show to it. any children. Totally fine. Dane. Yeah. Balcony oh, One I is fucking show. creeps <laughs> and weirdos. <laughs> Who knew? Hey, how old? When can I start showing this movie to children? Not ever. Not hey, ever. Hey, kid, you want to see a movie? It's got balls in it. Not ever. Hey, you guys want to see a movie? I'm Dane. And now I'm in the real balcony, the upper balcony, where the real balcony monsters are. Wow. And... A place that I had to take an elevator to get to. I did Holy not realize cow. that. Now, someone here has a ball gag in. Am I right in that? There you are. Has a ball gag in their mouth? Yes. She Incredible does. stuff. I'm going to come over to you. Great job. This is a tough costume to pull off, uh, and I'm glad that you did it. Hi, how are you? Hi, Paul. I'm well. How are you? <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> okay. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of context for this. So, at the beginning of the film, we see the whole sequence when um, everyone drinks the blood yeah. of Kron, right? Uh, when the little weakling gets the one drop, the only thing that gets big is his dick and balls, right? I kind of went into this assuming that Ronal is, like, descended from this person. But his uncle doesn't get the loser gene. So it's like, does it like skip a generation? Is it a recessive trait? And if so, why hasn't this been like eugenics out of the barbarian? (laughs) June, you have met your historical match. Wait, so your question is (laughs) pro-eugenics? You, to be clear, you took the ball gag out of your mouth to, to assert a pro-eugenics theory. This is, wow, just when I thought Balcony 1 was nuts, ba- Upper Balcony, absolute fucking heroes. <laughs> I appreciate Holy you. Holy t- cow. It was great. And I, I Shouldn't know- Ronald be put to death <laughs> because he's weak? She does ask a fair question in, in the sense that these barbarians, he doesn't seem to have offspring, or where did it, you know, what happened? I also don't think that his dick and balls are that impressive. Ronal or the... Ronal. How do you know? Because he doesn't use them to do anything. He fucks all the Amazons, Paul! <laughs> but that's a side quest. <laughs> By the way, sign me up for that side quest. He, he's so anti-quest, but he's like, I'll quest in this pussy. <laughs> Your question. So this is a fairly horny movie. Really? So, <laughs> why does everyone have flat Hank Hill asses? Great question. <sighs> it's Where are them juicy asses at? Honestly, I thought about that too, because there were a lot of... What? I did. I had that same question. Because there were, again, there was a lot of, like, nipple play in the movie. And there was were a lot of emphasis on the male breasts, the male breast tissue and nipples. And not a lot of emphasis on the male buns. And I appreciated that 
new framing of the male body. Like, let's let go of the asses as an idea, and let's focus elsewhere. Here's what I'll say. I felt like those are some flat pancake Danish butts. Oh, you think so? But then, but then all of the Amazonian women had high and tight and high, high, high asses. Yep, they're not Danish. They're so Amazon. you're saying all of the animators just drew themselves? Correct. Oh, interesting. Absolutely. By the way, Maybe. every single one of them. <laughs> Would it surprise you to know that um, the director and writer of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the Danish version, was a script consultant on this film? No, it wouldn't. <sighs> wow. Holy shit, what? <laughs> I'm going to go to our other costume person in the audience. Your name and your question. Uh, My name is Brooks, and my question is, I'm wondering if you guys noticed in the credits there is someone named Trowells Christofferson who (laughs) is listed as... No one would ever know. (laughs) Oh, you were wondering if we noticed this. Yes. Were you surprised we haven't talked about it yet? Yeah, oh... (laughs) I guess I'm surprised you guys haven't mentioned just a that little surprise. in the credits there's someone named Cherwell Christofferson. <laughs> and that if you me, did I'm a surprised. bit of research, you might find out. I'm surprised. <laughs> his, his title in the movie is Reindeer Wrangler. And I'm wondering huh. what you thought his role might have been in this film. Huh. Wait a minute. That's a... Well, okay, hang on a second. Huh. That's... Whoa. Reindeer Wrangler for... That's the he plays the voice of the reindeer wrangler. No, the, it would mean like he's wrangling huh. reindeer. In what? It's an animated movie. I know, but maybe there was some sort of like you think they had reindeer they wore with one of those mo-cap caps. Suits on? Yeah. You Look, think there's reindeer with mocap suits on for think, this movie? I think that Danish people, the animators, get hungry and they want fresh meat, and that's like craft service to them. So, you, like, it's sort of like, oh yeah, I'll feed the animators. They're working okay. on this ball. So sequence. I think the title is misleading. It's Chef. Paul, is it raining outside? You're soaking wet. I just ran up like four flights of stairs and I ran down four flights. Of... I'm wearing a sweater. It wasn't a good choice. You look great. It was a lot of stairs. It's hot you're up there. You're getting a workout tonight. This tour, you're getting a workout. I did. I shouldn't have done the push-ups to open the show. Okay, here we go. Obviously, we have opinions about this movie, but there are some people who just agree with June. <laughs> It's now time for Second Opinions. Isn't he scrawny, this barbarian? Horny Pixar, come on, Ronald. He quests far, so we go online and give it five stars because... If there's something missing in my life, it's a floating ball sack. Great job! Amazing job! Our last one. Here we go. You ready for it? I feel good. I feel good about it. So here we go. I'll be honest. This is going to go great. (laughs) Everybody else has sucked. Only up from here. And now it's time for Second Opinions. I'm Ashley. Five stars. Give it five stars. When I rate this film on Amazon. Write it all in caps lock so you know that I cannot be wrong. I watched this whole movie with my kids despite all the animated dick. Five stars, give it five stars, cause I think it is a good film. It is a great film. It is my favorite film. Honestly, perfect. You go. Thank you, Ashley. New York, Brooklyn, you brought it. You always bring a great job. And a what's up jerk shirt? Wow. And a what's up jerk shirt? Killer. You're doing great. Everybody did great. Okay. Holy cow. So just so you know, normally when we do this... What about a Flintstones adaptation in this style? I would see horny, that. Horny Flintstones? What was that comic that they made? They made like the adult... Oh, Flint- Mark Russell's comic? Yeah. It's fantastic. Right. It's a fa- that's a great comic book. Okay. I, I will... Uh, just to, There is an incredible Flintstones it's comic great. book 
by Mark Russell. There's, he also did an incredible Snagglepuss comic book that is fan- fantastic. Check I them urge out. everybody to read them. Okay. Normally, <laughs> when we do this, we'll see like how popular a film is. So say like a, a very, a smaller film that we do on the show, 400 reviews. You know, a more popular film, a couple thousand. This film, 20. Are there, is it just that it is, so is it, has it been out in English since 2011? Yeah, I mean, I've never heard of this Yes, it film. came out in 2011. Uh, most of the reviews I'll be reading tonight are from 2013. Okay. Are um, any of them going to be in Danish? They are. <laughs> and a what? lot of, uh, some of them are in French, some of them are in Danish, they're translated, so I won't read you the French or oh, Danish. Oh, damn. Um, but M. David wrote uh, this. Ronald the Barbarian is one of the funniest animated movies I've ever seen. June, is this your pen name? A movie that deserves to be known, but not for children. Pass it on. Five stars. And that's from French. That's, that's a French reviewer, okay? Reviewed in France. Get ready for this next one. I just wanted to kind of lay the groundwork with this. Rush and Schill, in November of 2013 wrote a review titled, Great Movie. And here we go. The Young Mariner Society is a small nautical league of aspiring seafaring boys that I run from my boat here in Iowa. Hang on a second. This is a confession. I'm so sorry. True or false, Iowa landlocked? (laughs) We... Spend countless nights on my boat just a few yards from the lake. Is Um, this admissible in court? I'll turn it over to Lockhart and Gardner to figure out if they can figure it out. That's right. I'm into season five of The Good Wife, everybody. (laughs) Get ready. When I show up, who am I? Ooh, I'm a lawyer. Okay, here we go. (laughs) I love that show. Eventually, when the repairs are complete, we'll take the boat out on the water. I know I worked those boys hard this summer. But it was the only way I knew how to prepare them for manhood. Much of their training was based off the television show Deadliest Catch, along with movies Cabin Boy and Down Periscope. What? Kids should not watch some of those. Upon graduation, several of my well-instructed little seamen have taken upon themselves... Little seamen? That's the T-shirt. The Young Mariner Society Little Seaman. That should be his shirt, yeah. Upon graduation, several of my well-instructed Little Seaman have taken upon themselves the distinguished title of Mariner. Winning the rope swinging competition this past summer with my boys, I gave them a night off from our rigorous activities. I just got to remind everyone, this is an Amazon review. Yeah. I just don't want to get lost in the sauce. Like, someone wrote this. This isn't an article where they're like, we uncovered this journal entry from the most prolific Iowan pedophile in history. (laughs) This is an Amazon review, okay? Winning the rope swinging competition this past summer with my boys, I gave them a night off from our rigorous activities to enjoy a little R&R with a movie night. Without a doubt, they earned it. This movie was selected for its theme of maturation from boy to man. To everyone's delight, this movie was a hit. Family values galore, and no home should be complete without it. Five stars. I don't know what's going on. Unless that has been written from jail, (laughs) I am flummoxed by that. Now, I think a lot of you want to know where this came from. And and you know what? I I said this earlier today that um, this film out of a list of 542 titles, the most popular films in Danish animation, Ronald the Barbarian is the second most popular film in their list after Ninjago, Masters of Spinjitsu. So it's Ninjago, Ronald. Wait, that's a Danish production? No, no, this is like the most popular films. In oh, da- the- I'm sorry, sorry, I get yes. it now. Yes, I thought you meant that they themselves had produced, but now I understand. No, this is Got just it. the list of the most so popular. So the Ninjago movie and then Ronald. 
The, Before a Toy Story or and this any is a Disney list, animation. A list of 542 movies. These are the top two. Now, you might be thinking, well, how did this movie come to be? Well, I want to tell I, you. I would, I, I would ask, how did it get made? <laughs> well, I will tell you that the director of this movie was known um, for kind of pushing the boundaries. He continues to push the boundaries because in 2021, he released a new TV show called John Dillermond. Translation, John Penisman, or John Williman, or John Dongman. And it's a Danish stop-motion animated television series about a man and his very long penis. Long? I don't like long as a descriptor. Big, John, okay, long? John Penisman. Concerning. John Penis Man is a middle-aged man who wears a red and white striped bathing costume and has a penis that can extend to a length of dozens of meters. Whoa! He uses his prehensile penis, oh. which stretches through his clothes as a tool to tame lions and fly like a helicopter. What? But his penis Please also, tell me we're going to watch the first episode right now. But, it, but his penis also acts independently of John getting him into trouble. Oh, he has a sentient... Penis. The series is aimed at four to eight year olds. It was on for two seasons, had about 40 episodes, and upon release, over 250,000 children viewed it. But mostly all on a boat in Iowa. (laughs) Well, I don't like that. All of those views are coming from a boat in Iowa. That is up on cinder blocks. I don't like that one bit. And in fact, like the more I sit with this movie, the more I'm like, I think, I think only adult women should watch this. I don't want anyone else watching it. <laughs> you don't want them getting this the wrong idea. This is a movie idea? for women. <laughs> but that's it. I don't think it's right for anyone else. <laughs> This is for us. I would love it if groups of women, like they were going to the Barbie movie, started going this to the one. Ronald the Barbarian movie. This one. That's it. Dressed in like I don't want other PC. people watching it and getting the wrong ideas. <laughs> and now we will watch the opening of John. Thank you. Peterson. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for this gift. Today, did John D. Love it. John Dillerman, John Dillerman, and I got the stakes to Dillerman. That is the ticket on the ticket can. Maybe we can sneak the boat, hang a deal with flow, hang a bed with a bed with some laughy clothes. John Dillerman, John Dillerman, John Dillerman, oh boy, John Dillerman, John Dillerman, John Dillerman. And that. Here's what I'll say I'm on board for that. That sound, that looks great. I'll watch, I'll watch, how many episodes do we got? 39 episodes. I'm in. Uh, I also like that he's so, somehow dressed like Waldo. You know, he wears, looks a lot like Waldo. Yeah. Uh, Waldo with a big long dick. Yeah. What the fuck? John. Then that's a kid's show. Four to eight year old. It's imagine, not. I, I, it's not. Imagine developed. if they tried to do an American adaptation of that. How Ugh. much people would lose their Fucking mind. Yeah. They're trying to show us kids a man with a 12-foot dick. <laughs> well, now I'm going to say... I'm, like, obsessed with that. That That is some nuts-level stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we really fucking did it tonight. <laughs> this is... This was... I was... I am shocked beyond belief by so much of what has transpired on this stage. And isn't it wonderful that 13 years in, we can still delight in yeah. this absolute trash. It really is. Together. And I will say this. It's Cut that surprising. from the podcast. Don't put out videos of me saying nice things. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, we put this show on sale at the very last minute. In New York, you always come out. We appreciate it. We'll be back and we'll torture you more. We'll yes. find other Thank ways you. to do it. Uh, I'm so excited that you're here. We love being at BAM. I just want to give a shout out to our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas. Thank you, Beth. Give it up for Beth. Give it up for June Diane Raphael. Give it up for Jason Manzoukas. I am Paul Shear. Thank you, everyone. This was amazing. Thank you. Good night. Eat shit, Brooklyn. (laughs) 
Thank you so much to the staff of the Brooklyn Academy of Music and our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas. If you want to feel like you were a part of the show, you can get yourself a t-shirt. That's right. We designed it live with the audience that night. It says, Ronald the Barbarian, a movie for women with an image of Barbarian June standing on top of a pile of skulls. And yes, one skull does have Jason Hair. You can snag that shirt and all of our shirts at tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. And people, it's time. It is time to buy my book. I know you might be putting it off because it doesn't come out until May, but guess what? You got to buy it now. And then when it comes out in May, it will be a surprise, a beautiful surprise. And if you pre-order, you can get access to a very special part of my website where you can see videos and clips and things that have never been seen before. Plus, if you get the audiobook, there are tons of bonus features in there. So there you go. Um, I will not be able to record a brand new Last Looks next week since we will be on tour in the UK. So instead, we will be re-releasing a How Did This Get Made classic episode in its place. I'm talking about the only movie in the Fast franchise we haven't yet pulled out of the vault. That's right, Hobbs and Shaw featuring all-star guests Adam Scott and Nicole Byer. So if you want to find out what our next movie is going to be, make sure you tune into that Hobbs and Shaw re-release because I will announce it at the top of that episode. And don't worry, we will still be following up on Ronald the Barbarian on a future supersized Last Looks. And don't forget to send us your corrections and omissions by leaving a voicemail at 619-PAUL-ASK or writing a comment on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm. All right, people, we are going to be in Europe and we want you there. Tickets are still available for some locations. And remember, you can find us online everywhere at hdtgm or visit us at hdtgm.com. If you love the show, tell your friends to listen to it too. Seriously, word of mouth is the best mover of this pod. And you know what? It's a lot more fun arguing about bad movies with a buddy. And last but not least, I got to say thank you to all your listeners who support this show every week and our entire team who this show couldn't be done without. I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sani, Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got, people. We will see you next week. Until then, bye for now.